Hello and <laughs> welcome to the PML Draft Recap Part 2. Because we have been going at this for a while already. <clears throat> and now we're going to do the Galar version. Again with me, I have Jaden. G'day. And Matt. Good day. <laughs> Bet you can't tell which one was which. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's, always, it's always fun to hear an American say good day. It's always a highlight of my day. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> uh, I, I think I sounded just like you. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it sounded perfect to me. I thought he was Australian for a second. <clears throat> but uh, we got my team next, uh, the Chartridge. We I could probably oh, cruise yeah. past it. I mean, yeah. Jaden and I already agreed it was it was zeros, right, Jaden? All, all zeros, yeah. It was, yeah, it was zeros. so weird. So wow, weird. I, I too gave yeah, myself was... zeros. <laughs> yeah, look, pretty trash team. I think it just runs in the Zamora uh, gene, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're like two minutes into this. You're already back at it with, with Steven. That's, that's rough, man. I hope he beats you. Hey, hey. Uh, I hope he does that too, honestly. <laughs> hey, Zach. Uh, yeah, can can we get you to fill in today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so we got Joe, right? All right. The Chargers have drafted Dracovish, Hippowdon, Fable, Electivire, Froxlash, Rapidash, Lycanroc, Midday, Steelix, Lorantis, and Blaziken. That's Rapidash G. Oh, yeah, Rapidash Galarian. I mean, right. From the outset, right? It's just a it's a pretty strong team. Like all all jokes aside, it's a very very good team. Um, going going off of what we went off with um with the with the tears, I went straight in and went eight for bulk. It is <clears throat> because there is a lot of bulk in this team. The, like, you look at Pokemon like if on Clefable, Steelix, they will always 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 take a hit. They doesn't matter what it is they will always take it yep i agree um, uh i also led with that with an eight for bulk so um right there with you uh enough walls to to be an issue uh with varying types there i, I think it's it's a good a good setup defensively i think with the fable as well you're that you're that special unaware like you can bring it in on anything that's set up already and it'll just take a hit just regularly. Like it's just a really, really strong Pokemon to have. And the tier two is a, it's absolute steal. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I was uh, definitely looking at this team and I was like, I'm not going to draft like I normally do. I'm going to try to draft a good time. That's a good idea. I'd like to see you <laughs> win again. Me I would too, not. Man. He'd be insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for recovery and support, I went a nine. Um, and I, as I was saying before, I did actually lose my um, my spreadsheet beforehand. But when I went with a nine, I think you look at things like what Clefable can bring. Um, you got Stealth Rock support, you got uh, Wish support, you've got um, even just healing itself with Soft Boiled, <clears throat> uh, Hip Out on again, Stealth Rocks, but also providing that sand for Drake of Dish. Um, will be absolutely clutch for that um, sand rush. <clears throat> um, also, uh, an under underrated and underutilized, I think uh, it's sort of something that would otherwise go under the radar, Frost Lass, so um, with Destiny Bond, like Destiny Bonding things that are um, set up to sweep, making sure that you can take it down, take the attackers down with them. I think that'll be really, really important, um, especially post Dynamax for most Pokemon. So if you set up, something set up, Really, really powerfully, Frostlass can just put it in its place after the Dynamax runs out. So I think overall, very, very strong. That See now, I I agree to a point. I actually I think I was a little Ooh. harsher here. I gave uh, Joe a seven on recovery and support, and I think the bulk of that seven is carried by the the support side of that because you're right. He he he's got plenty of support, lots of uh, options as far as you know setting things up. Um, but honestly, other than Clefable, you get a good taunt on, on Clefable, you know, 
I, I don't see any recovery with the team. So that was the the one real pain point that I I found with the team personally. Yeah, I think I think the, the um the core of Clefable and his howdon though he's got his howdon who can um is it refresh that again? Oh, slack off. You can slack mm-hmm. off and then Clefable can soft boil. I think between the two, you got enough bulk there to, and be able to like heal each other, like heal themselves. So I think it works well. I guess we'll see. But, but, but I take your point as well. Um, the wish, you got one wish protector, you got one wish support. Um, if you find a good taunt and yeah, it cripples that whole recovery. Lurantis gets synthesis. <laughs> are you really using Are you really using Lurantis though? I yeah. literally, I have in my notes, I was like, uh, why did, I don't know why he grabbed Lurantis. <laughs> Defog, maybe? Uh, I, 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 I have no idea. And like, Joe. Superpower, uh, coming on webs, get the speed boost, you know. Oh, I suppose. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, a good... that's not bad. It could be viable as a Dynamax Pokemon. I was just, you know. And I wanted a grass type. But, yeah, but if you get... If you're gonna Dynamax it and use like say Max Ooze, it's gonna lower its special attack rather than boost it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway, remember use it. How you use Lurantis. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, On to so speed. Speed. I went a nine again. Mm-hmm. I thought he's um, got a very good uh, mix of Trick Room viable Pokemon and also the Hip Out uh, and Dracovish core is always something. Always has a good synergy. They always, though, if you have something like that takes advantage of weather, I think it always has to be a high score because of that. Just simply because it is going to be very, very fast and very hits very, very hard. Um, mm-hmm. So I think you know, Blaze with the speed boost, Dracofish with the um, the sand rush ability, uh, Lycan Rock Midday with the with um with Accelerock, Frost Slash is rush. very is generally very quick. And I mean, as Joe pointed out before, like Lurantis with the sticky webs, um, it can get, get that speed boost. I think that's pretty niche, but it'll. Like, there's a lot of a lot of teams that are running sticky webs, so it, it, there is some. I'd see there's, I'd see some use for it, but I think overall, he's got good, either either very good slow Pokemon or very good fast Pokemon. Yep, and that's what I have written down here as well. I, I put the perfect amount of fast versus slow Mons. Um, I think that. Uh, you're going to be set up really well for for either scenario that you're going to you know end up in. Um, I, I'm not going to point out all the stuff that Jaden already pointed out, but I did also actually give you a nine um, for speed. I think you're set up really really well there. Um, some of them are a little glass cannony, uh, but not all of them. You you do have some ones that are fast like Dracovish, especially with that support that are not going to you know they're they're going to be able to take more than a hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, for wall breaking, I went an eight because um, I look at the team and I really only think Dracovish is a uh, Dracovish and to an extent Blaziken um, are your two big hitters. Like Dracovish, you can give a choice band in Sand Rush and it doesn't matter what it is, unless it's like Seismitoad, unless something we've got water absorb, you can just vicious rent things until to your heart's content. But outside of Dracovish, you look at the team and think, all right what actually is going to do anything without setup and i don't see much um Dracovish does carry the my score at eight um blaziken is good but um i think it does really rely on sword stance to be able to, or bulk up to be able to do more in terms of um that punch that, that punching holes thing um but yeah aside from that i don't really see a lot of wall breaking potential yeah sleeping on my boy lichen rock uh, uh, I also gave you an eight uh, for wall breaking. Uh, I, I agree that Dracovish is carrying most of that, um, but I will say uh, you have a fair few mons that uh, I think in a, a draft like this, where not everyone you know is running with their their top mons for you know every single battle, you're going to be encountering some lower tier mons that some of your lower tier mons are going to be able to take out um, you know fairly easily. I think. You know, some of, as I mentioned previously, you do have some of these, you know, glass cannons that, um, in terms of breaking walls, maybe that might not be the easiest thing to do, but not all walls are cre- created equally. So, 
uh, <laughs> I think that overall you'll you'll have uh, some decent wall breaking capabilities there. And team synergy, I gave you a nine, and my total overall was for forty three, so or eighty six all up. Um, so it was a very generous score, I think, all up. Um, but I think team synergy, I think really. As I was saying before, the Drake and Bishop out on co the combo, the, yeah. the way that the Powder and Fable interact with each other and, and interact with, like, generally support the team, like, they will take a hit and they will be able to safely switch into other things. So, Fable teleporting into something else, you know, Steelix being able to physically stop a lot of the physical attacks, um, even taking a sturdy, like, you make it sturdy, even the special attacks will, you know, even get a. a, a Get some chip off on something else on these mm -hmm. on a special attacker. Um, I think overall you drafted very very well, <clears throat> and um, uh, yeah, <laughs> overall I think you. Yeah, I was looking at the pause. Not... It's, it's, it's hard to do without it's hard to do without the um, without my spreadsheet because I had it all all written down. But um, I think the year of the cause are very very good too. I thought it was more like uh, I don't like complimenting Joe's team, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I mean, there's that. that there's, there's definitely that, some but... of that. <laughs> yeah, it, it pains me to say um, I I did actually give you the highest rating. Um, it truly pains me to say because uh, you're in my division. <laughs> um, I also give you a nine for team synergy. Same reasons. You've got um, uh, you know a good sand setup uh, you know, between Dracovish and Powdon. Uh, I think uh, even Clefable, right? Can can uh, doesn't Clefable have an ability to resist the? Yeah, Magic Guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, good there, Lycan Rocks, uh, Steelix. Like overall, I think it's just going to be a good core to your team, uh, accented nicely by some of your um, faster uh, glass cannons, and uh, just again, despite the fact that you are set up well for Sandstorm. You actually have a good variety in terms of typing, so um, I think again, uh, unfortunately, a, a pretty good team. <laughs> and what was your I'll, I'm sorry, I just want to come out and say quickly that Joe wasn't my top rated. Um, I, I couldn't bring myself to bring him. Oh, top th rated. thank God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was my top rated. I gave myself tens in every category. Yeah, naturally. <laughs> So, what was my uh, so I give you there? a, yeah, I give you a forty-one, so eighty-two. All right, so that do that brings, simple math for you. That brings me to eighty-four over. All right. I don't think that's now, the highest one. Well, yeah. It's the now y'all so mentioned uh, last time. Y'all mentioned um, CC, and uh, she she's coming up next. Um, and she has a, a pretty tough team, so I'm interested to see what you guys think about that. So please enlighten me. Well, um, can, I, can I put a spoiler in? Go for yeah, it. Why not? Uh, spoiler is uh, Cece was my highest rated um, coach. I think she has a phenomenal team. I think she's drafted some absurdly, and I think she's done extremely well to draft what she's done. And uh, another spoiler: uh, me and her battle week one. Well, that'll okay. be a great game. That'll be a great game. Game of the week. I might just have to now. All right, so what has she drafted? You might All be right. wondering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the coach of the Crimson Slayer Fairy, Cece, as she likes to be called. She drafted Salamence, Scizor, Azumarill, Rhyperior, Gorgeist, Zorort, Hitmontop, Salazzle, Fulton, and Silvali. <clears throat> the master of all types. I, I am very, very keen on this team. I, I love it. Um, CC and I have a very uh, similar playing style too. So I just, I think it just, you know, mate, like I think I have like a sort of like a, a, a bit of a weakness to this type of team because it's just a really, really strong team. Mm -hmm. um, for bulk, for bulk, I gave her a nine. <clears throat> because you just look at this team, you got Hitmontop providing. Um, like, this is probably eating into like a little bit of the support stuff as well. But Hitmontop's giving out those those um, intimidates 
will naturally make her team more bulky. But even outside that, she has extremely good bulk in Rhyperia, Azumarill, Scizor, uh, even Salamence outside of an ice move. Um, and Gorge Ice, well, that's already half a team. Already just a very, very bulky team. And Hitmontop can also deceptively take a lot of special attacks. It's, um, he doesn't want to, he doesn't, doesn't really like taking attacks, but he can take a special attack. Um, and Silvalli can just provide, and also, again, going to the support side, Silvalli can also, you know, get those parting shots off to, to really, really help out that bulk, you know, team. Yeah, I, I think her having a two Intimidate Mons is really going to help her stop physical threats. Um, and also increase the bulk that she already has in Scizor, Rhyperior, Gorgeist even. And then there's just so many Pokemon, like you said, on her team that can just soak up hits and make you regret trying to attack them. So I gave her, uh, I gave her a 9. Nice. I uh, I've given her an eight. Uh, I I do see oh, some bulk um, in you know Zumo Rhyperior, uh, Hitmon Top, maybe even Gorgeist. I've never had an issue with Sizor. Maybe just the Sizors I've gone against were not outfitted properly. Um, but uh, I guess I'll I'll get to see because I'll get to battle her. So, uh, but I've given her an eight for bulk. Sort of a bit of it's a little bit of a plug here, but um. When I was running Psychic Gym, I run, I run to Scissor all the time, naturally because it's a super effective Pokemon. Um, and it, it can be quite awkward to deal with. Um, you know, it doesn't, it does not like a fire attack at all. But even, but outside of any of that, um, outside of fire move, it can take a pretty good hit if it's built defensively. Um, you know, the roosting and uh, knockoffs for, um, you know, knocking off Life Orber users or Choice Band users. Can make make life really really tough for your opponents to break it down. Yeah, you won't see Scissor in Texas during the summertime. So I'm gonna say. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have the recovery and support. I actually gave her an eight. She has plenty of support options. She has two defoggers. She has a stealth rocker. She has a spinner. <laughs> She has Intimidate on two Mons that she can make viable. Uh, Gorgeist with Leech Life. I mean, there's just so many things this team can do. And <clears throat> dude, that's all I got to say about that. She's just got a lot of shit going on with this team. It's going to be hard to beat. I initially had her at a night as well for um, for support and recovery. But I think I might even give her a might push her up to a nine because I was thinking like, I hadn't... You said, said a few things, Joe, that I hadn't actually considered, like the leech life, the double, or I saw the double intimidate. Um, but I think that needs to, that can't be understated in a, in a draft league. Like having the ability to intimidate multiple Pokemon or even the same Pokemon multiple times um, is really, really quite strong in a draft league. And then Silvali on top of that, giving off party shots. Um, there's, what else? We've got Bolt Hunts with a Bolt Switch, is Zora providing. It's just a just a decoy that Zorak can can mm -hmm. provide. Like you can bring in Zorak disguised as Salamence, and people will shit the bed. Especially if they think that it is legitimately Salamence. And I'm I'm very guilty of always falling for a Zorak tricks. Um, <clears throat> it's it can be quite challenging for me anyway. It can be quite challenging to to find the Zorak in a team, and if she uh, she plays it well. Zora can go and can go and really really hard on on the opponents too. Mm -hmm. So I think overall she has done an exceptional job in um, the support side. Uh, but in terms of recovery, you know she has got um, Sizzle who can roost, Salamence who can roost. Um, I think Gorgeist has Synthesis. Uh, Zumeril can it's not it's not intuitive, but Zumeril, Zumeril can also um, Aqua Ring mm -hmm. uh, if she wants to come off a bit. You know using the Parish Trapping. She can go that route. Um, but overall, I think the team does a lot of things. They, they support each other very, very well. So yeah, I'd go with the nine. <clears throat> <clears throat> Matt? Yeah, 
yeah, you guys uh, point out uh, some some good stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll admit <laughs> that uh, as I got away about halfway through doing all these, I was like, oh man, I'm running out of time. So I had to kind of speed through some. So um, I, uh, I've i given her an eight, uh, an eight in recovery and, and support. Um, there, there's some stuff there that uh, I didn't really look too far into as far as like uh, recovery options for some of her mods. So I think, uh, I think, yeah, overall she's got some good recovery and support set up. All right, <clears throat> we got speed tiers, <clears throat> and her speed tiers are pretty, pretty solid. She has some decently slow mods, but most of her team is pretty fast. Um, um I just, yeah go <clears throat> no go ahead i'm i'm still thinking that's all right um i gave her a nine i gave her a nine on speed um and i think the reason why i gave her nine is that she doesn't have a lot of a, a lot of slow pokemon so the main slow pokemon that stick out to me is riparia and gorge ice but what she does have is a lot of pokemon that can use uh priority moves so Scizor, Azumarill, uh, Hitmontop, uh, they will be those Pokemon you can really, really rely on in Trick Room if um, if someone brings it. Uh, especially if Azumarill gets a belly, band, a belly drum off. Like, belly, no, if she gets a belly drum off and goes Aqua Jets on, on things, they, they will they will suffer. It, it, irrespective of whether it's in Trick Room or not, those, those Pokemon will suffer. Um, a bit of setup required, um, you know, with some of them. Um, so Salamence is good in outside of Trick Room. Gets even better if you can get a Dragon Dance off. Um, you know, Bolt Under is good. Um, it can provide those fast pivots. Um, but I think maybe um, I, I've not had much to do with Bolt Under. I prefer Jolteon, but. Mm -hmm. Bolt on, I, I do consider Bolt on to be a good, you know, free pick Pokemon. That is a good bargain pick. <clears throat> yes. And then, uh, so Volley also is pretty speedy. You get Flame Charge. With it being any typing it wants, it, it can, it can really help the team too. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say is I don't really see, uh, I don't know if Gorgeist can trick room. It can. Okay. Okay. So that would be the only can. trick room option if you wanted that. And I don't think she really wants to go trick room. In, in no, this. I, think I, she's... I doubt it too. But I'm just saying, if she did want it, that'd be her <laughs> way to go. And then uh, yeah. Salamence, I think, is her only uh, <clears throat> Pokemon that would be able to tell wind if anything. Yeah, I or... think she's. A, I don't. I don't think she wants to go trick room. The trick room route in this because she's got very fast Pokemon. And they, 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 they play naturally into her to that style. I think her, if she goes into Trick Room, she has the good, I suppose, defensive Trick Room Pokemon. Things like Sizzle, Azumarill, and um, Rhyperia. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go with an 8. Yeah, I've, I've also given her an 8. Um, I, I agree. Um, bless you. Um, <laughs> that was my son. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, definitely some some speedy mons um, for for the most part. Um, not, I, I don't feel like she has enough slow mons to make a trick room work. If that you know was something that happened to her, but as long as she has an answer for that trick room, then um, I think it'll be good to go. And honestly, with, with this as fast and powerful of, of mons as she she does, I don't think she'll have to worry too much about trick room. Agreed. Now we're going to go to uh, the wall breaking ability, and I think I'd have to give her a nine. I mean, she has a lot of Pokemon that just hit hard, naturally. I mean, there's also setup potential. Salamence could easily get off with Dragon Dance and then Moxie all the way through. Scizor, of course, Choice Banded just wrecks. As, like uh, Jaden said with the Zumarill Belly Drum. And then, uh, of course, Rhyperior with the very popular weakness policy can get things going as well and that's just one side of her team <laughs> so i um, yeah. yeah 
I would say nine. I agree. I also have her at a nine. I think she has several options for just uh, dropping them on on the field and and letting it punch holes in, <laughs> in the opponent. So um, some of those are going to be mons that are uh, not going to be able to take it too well. Um, but I think she has enough of a mix of, of those that can and can't. Um, so definitely some, some good wall breaking ability on the team, especially uh, depending on how she utilizes that Sil Valley. Uh, if she's planning well, you know, looking at her uh, opponent's teams and weaknesses ahead of time, she can even get that Sil Valley out there to, to punch holes. Mm -hmm. um, I had her at a 10, but I think... Um... Thinking back on it now, I think it's probably better to put her at a nine. Um, and only the only reason why I say that is because the, the inconsistent, like what I'm about to say, would be, would be inconsistent with what I've been saying with about the other teams. So she has very, very strong Pokemon, but they again they all require setup. So Salamence comes in, they can press buttons, and once he gets going, he gets he will wall break everything. But he needs like I think he probably benefits from that setup option as well. <clears throat> Um, Sizzle, you know, Choice Banded can put holes in things, but then it's, it could be locked into just a Bullet Punch, or it could be locked into, you know, X Sizzle or Aura, Chill Wing Beat or something. But in as Asmaril can break things as well, but prefers it with the belly, with the belly drum. So I think she has very, very strong options for the for the wall breaking. But if she can get them set up, it makes it makes those wall breaking options even better. And lastly, uh, yes, I think I, I think I think a nine is the, is the way to go. Sounds we all agreed. Sounds fair. And now, lastly, for the team synergy, uh, I'm gonna have to give her a nine. This team works really great together. There's a bunch of, there's two U-turners. There's the Volt Switcher. The Intimidates really help <clears throat> the other Pokemon who are kind of weaker on the defensive side that are gonna be able to take hits now. Uh, uh, there's just a lot of there's just a lot going for this team that can help each other, especially with all the diverse typing. See, I'm, I actually have to uh, disagree a little bit. Um, I do think that she she has uh, a good setup in terms of of mons that can potentially help each other out. Um, my my I gave her a seven in team synergy um, because I think that if you can stop the momentum of her team or, or prevent it from starting she's going to run into some issues and couple that with the fact that she has multiple mons that have times four weaknesses between salamence sizor riparior salazzle I, I just feel like it's going to be a little too easy to potentially stop that momentum if if done right but then again uh if she gets that momentum going quick enough you you might not have that option so uh, but i did give her a seven overall so I tend to agree with Joe. Um, I gave her a nine in Team Synergy. I didn't actually consider the amount of four times weaknesses, but that doesn't deter me from giving her a nine. Um, and I say that because the amount of options she has to either hard switch or or um, pivot are uh, very, very good. Also, Zora can play the shenanigans, so he could he could um, you know take on the role of you know, Scizor and take and take a fire type attack nicely um i think you know she's got a good cause she's got good um good pivots and good options to be able to switch into things that can take the hit for for the team um so yeah i think overall a nine i i think it's definitely going to be a, a great first uh first match uh to, to see between Joe and, and CC. Uh, they are my two highest rated teams. So, Agreed. Right, I got so CC to win. <laughs> so what is y'all's final know, scores for, the, for CC? I had a 40, um, so 80. I had 45, so 90. Divide that by three, and it's an eighty-five point three. So she is now the highest ranked team by one point. Woo! Get it, CC. All right. Next up, we have Coach Jacob. 
and I forget his thing's name. The the Knoxville Keglins? The Knoxville Keglins. I think the Blisa, yes. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's his team, the Knoxville Keglion. And he has Garchomp, Ice Cube, Alakazam, Gastrodon, Drapion, Combuskin, Starmie, Stray Dilly, Tauros, and Circuitry. What did you give him for bulk mats? So I actually had him rated pretty low for bulk. I've got him at a six. I think that the Garchomp is obviously going to be able to uh, take some good hits. Uh, I will be honest, I'm not very familiar with Ice Q. Um, I I don't like it, and so I've, <laughs> I've never <laughs> used it. Um, uh, but uh, don't Gastrodon, like Jacob say that he loves his Ice Q. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember him in the chat uh, talking about it too. I was like, I don't, I don't understand it. I will never understand you, Jacob. That's okay though. Um, I think that overall, a lot of his mons are lacking uh, the ability to to take significant hits. Um, he's got a couple, uh, depending on you know what they're up against. You know, Cordilli can can take some hits, uh, Gastrodon as well. Um, but uh, overall, not not a ton. No no walls that I'm truly worried about. That's fair. I mean, he does have a bunch of. Uh... <clears throat> Pokemon that can take a hit. Well, not a bunch, but he has a few. And then the other of his mods are pretty much glass cannons and combustion star meter tree. Uh, ice Q is a glass cannon unless you try to hit it physical because Ice Face does give it that free, like, first hit, like Mimikyu, but only for physical attack. If you go at it with a special attack, it hits through the, through the disguise thing. And uh, Garchomp being yeah. four times a week, I mean, it is naturally bulky, but you hit it with an ice type move and it can go down. And a lot of Pokemon do get ice type coverage. I went ahead and gave him a six. Oof. Rough. I gave him an eight. I gave him an eight for um, bulk. And the reason why I went for the bulk, went for those, um, went for eight on the bulk, is because I, I think. The core of Gastrodon, Cradilly, and um, even ESQ to, a, to, to an extent, I think they can provide him with good, you know, staying power in, in his team. Um, and Garchomp is obviously naturally bulky as well. You wouldn't want to keep Garchomp in anything that you would suspect that was an ice type move. So you wouldn't bring him in, you wouldn't keep Garchomp in on a water type, say. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, but this team loves water types. Like, if you look at you know, what he's got there. Gastron with stalk with um I think water absorber or well, could he get storm drain? Mm -hmm. uh, Gastron does he have water absorb and storm drain? Yeah, he has both of like, this team loves water types. Either way, loves water types. Um so I don't think he's got too many issues. I, I think he's got some issues, but I don't think he's got many. And I think he'll find ways to make those teams even bulkier. The Cradilly getting stopped by off can make his team exceptionally bulky. Um, you know, Cradilly providing Leech Seed support, um, Gastron being able to, well, to, Gastron's ability to even be able to recover is good. I mean, that's more into the next category. Um, but I would agree as well that Alakazam, Zerfetry, um, they're both very much glass cannons. Well, I think an eight. <clears throat> And let's move on to the next category, which is recovery and support. Let's see. He does have good recovery naturally in Cradilly, Gastron, Starmie. But other than that, I don't see anything else in health. And then in support, he has, it seems like Garchomp's the only stealth rocker aside from Cradilly. <clears throat> Nothing that can really get defog that I see, and then Starmie can rapid spin. So there's that. He's got Tauros for Intimidate too, if he wants. Yeah, that is some support there. I would give him a seven overall, from what I see. I, I've also six. got him. As, I've got him at a seven. <laughs> I think it will average out, actually. 
<laughs> to be safe so far. Um, I'm giving it a six uh, in recovery. I think that um, even though he does have some recovery options and some support options, I just don't know that he will be able to effectively use utilize all of his recovery options. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to see Alakazam go recover. No. <laughs> and I think... Um, Even Starmie some, is rough. It's hard to get a recover on Starmie. Mm -hmm. I've tried running Starmie before and it's quite difficult to you know run recovery on Starmie. Mm -hmm. um, like, probably like Cordelia and Gastron could probably get it off nicely. Just depends if there's a grass type out in the field or not. Um, for, get, for, for Gastrodon, or grass type coverage. Um, but it can be done. So I think he's um, he's got options. I'm not sure if they're particularly fantastic options. Yeah, I would agree that recovery is is going to be his bigger issue. Um, I, I you know he also has the support of uh, being able to uh, do the toxic spikes with Drapion if he wants to go that route. Um, I don't I don't think that he is. Well, that, that'll that get into the next thing with speed here, but uh, let's go ahead and move on to that, I guess. <laughs> oh, we can lead you leaves on the speed tiers. Matt. Yeah, go ahead, Jaden. I'll let you lead this one. Oh, no, I was going to say, Matt leads on the speed tiers because he's <laughs> talking about speed No, tiers. no, please, Joe, after you. Um, <laughs> let's look at this guy. Um, uh, no. for speed. You give him a seven? I give him a seven for speed. Yeah. Um, and I think sort of similar to um to Steven's team. Uh, <laughs> are you Steven as a as a shit yardstick? <laughs> um, he's got good. He's got, he's got good choice scarf options, right? Like he's got Garchomp can you know drag and scale and you know get the speed boost, but he comes out of the sacrifice of his defense. But he's also scarf shop has always been an excellent Pokemon. Um, scarf circuitry as well. Um, you know, to patch up that otherwise pretty mediocre speed is um it makes it, it makes it a very formidable Pokemon. Um you can even scarf Tauros, you know, get those scarf body slams off uh, with sheer power. They do some they can do some pretty significant damage. So what he has is good speed good choice scarf Pokemon. But mm. what the difference is between um Jacob and Steven's team is that Jacob's team is actually good. No. <laughs> 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 I, I, need uh, stop rag. I need to stop ragging on Steven's team. <laughs> oh, it's, man. Become, it's, become, it's become a bit of a meme. I'm sorry, Steven. Oh, Steven's going to be the memeiest person in the, in the league right now. He, he's oh, never going to come back to a draft after this. This is. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, it's get, it's going to be up to you to replace him. You got to find someone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> um. But no, he's got Alakazam, he's got Combustion. And Alakazam is naturally quite fast. Combustion, I think, can, will actually surprise a lot of teams. I think Combustion can actually come in and do a job, um, even without Eviola. I think he can run Life Orb and you know get those speed boosts off and, and potentially cause a lot of problems for um, for teams. <clears throat> I think it'll be deceptively difficult to deal with Combustion, especially because Combustion can Dynamax. So getting those um, max knuckles off and getting the speed boosts off at the same time, I think can suddenly get him out of hand very quickly. Yeah, I give him uh, an eight for speed. Uh, I think that he has it where it counts. Um, he has a few slower mons, uh, so you know if he if he's forced to, to fall back on him for. Um, a few turns while, while he's waiting out like a, a trick room or something like that. Um, most of his slower mons are his bulkier mons as well with, with recovery options. So I think he's sitting well in terms of speed. Like you mentioned, being able to scarf the circuitry I think is going to help. Um, but overall, most of his mons are, are pretty quick um, and are only going to get you know faster with uh, the options that they have. You know, you go uh, you know, Dragon Dance, Garchomp, and just let it, let it go. Let it run rampant. No, well, Garchomp gets a uh, skull shot, mm. not Dragon Dance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Even he better. can he, he can put damage wise speeds up. Um, I gave him a seven 
I, I, I kind of agree with you guys, and uh, yeah, you can scarf a lot of mons, and it'll it'll be better. I mean, I know Ice Cube after it takes a hit, it gets pretty fast, but um, he really has nothing for speed control other than maybe having a rap sit on Starmie. So if a Trick Room team comes in, his team's not going to be slow enough to try to counter that. and He'll lose a lot of mons in the process. And if he just faces an all-out speed team, you, you can only scarf one Pokemon. So he might run into trouble with that as well. I think that's fair. Right. Now let's move into the wall-breaking ability of his team. I give him a six. Nothing on his team aside from Garchomp and Zerkashi can like massively hit something. I mean, maybe Specs Alakazam or Starmie if he gets a power or a Meteor Beam off. You sleep on Alakazam, Jar. Yeah, I agree. I, don't know. I, I just feel like in draft, <laughs> I just feel in draft you can really prepare for Alakazam way where it won't be an issue. I remember absolutely sweeping you with an Alakazam. <laughs> <laughs> when? In draft? Um, the monotype, the monotype League, I think it was. It was a tournament. You thought... It's not the same. I didn't prep for Alakazam. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to beat Alakazam either way. Okay, buddy. Um... <laughs> No, I just don't know. I don't know about his team. I mean, it could wall break. Uh, like I said, Garchomp, Zerkatry have great potential. Drapion could possibly get off a of Fell Stinger, but it would need a lot of setup for his team to punch holes. So that that's why I think. Uh, what did I say? A seven? Yeah, I gave him a six. Oh, a six. You give him a seven. You give him a seven. Give him a seven. Yeah, give him a seven. <laughs> I give him a add a boy. What did you give him, Matt? Uh, so I gave him an eight. Uh, I think that between, uh, you know, if he can successfully use Tauros, I think there's actually some wall breaking uh, possibilities there with Tauros as well. Um, Zerkatry, Garchomp, uh, Alakazam. I think that he's outfitted well enough to be able to handle most walls he's going to run into, especially if he scarfs the Zerkatry. I, I gave him a nine, and that might seem crazy looking at his team, but you gotta look at. I, I think you guys are both. I think you both slept on the issue a little bit. He's picked the issue for a reason, and um, you know he gets belly dance or belly dance, belly drum. <laughs> belly dance. <laughs> belly, dance. Belly, dance. Ooh, belly dance is a rare move. That Shake it, Ice Cube. Ice Cube can. <laughs> he gets belly drum, and that's not something to like completely be. You know, to completely um like sneeze at once he if he can set he can set up in front of if, um it doesn't take a lot of setup but if he can set up in front of a physical attacker who he can get that he can wall that first attack and when he gets to that no ice form he's suddenly got a 130 base speed so you got a plus six psu with a base 130 speed really hammering hard it's a bit niche but it can happen, and you got to be very, very, you have to be very, very careful when you're fighting against him. Um, but in terms of Pokemon that can actually just sit in front of something and press buttons, you know, Scarf Circuitry and Garchomp can do that. And same with Alakazam. Um, you know, I talk a lot of shit about you know how my Alakazam thrashed uh, Joe, but it, you know, <laughs> a timid life orb Alakazam can punch holes. It's got the move tool to be able to. Look, he's got the large, very large move tool. You know, he's got Shadow Ball, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, Thunderbolt as as all coverage options. Um, if he can manage to get, you know, Psychic Terrain up with a, with Dynamax, <clears throat> he can get Expanding Force and really, really hurt things. So, I think uh, it, this is not a team to sleep on in terms of the wall breaking potential. Okay, that's fair. All right, what do you think of the team synergy? Um, I gave for team synergy, I gave him a seven. Um, I 
just think that there's the, the one thing he will struggle with is the pivot options. So Zerkatry is his main pivot user, but if he staffs Zerkatry, then that's going to mm-hmm. really be a problem for him because he'll want to either Volt Switch or Thunderbolt something and get momentum, or he can Volt Switch to something else. So I think looking at his team, you can't. There's not. There's no other. Um, pivot options to keep that momentum going so I think while he's got a good team I think where it could be made better is if he gets it if he can manage to nab you know another fast and slow pivot Pokemon so something like you know Crobat <clears throat> maybe Crobat instead of um well, actually I don't know what tier Crobat's in I think it might be a tier 2 Pokemon isn't it he's tier 2 yeah 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 that makes it a bit challenging but finding some kind of you know pivot Pokemon I think would really help his team you know be able to pivot into different things you know whether it be defensive or offensive yeah I can see that um I do think he'll struggle a lot again with the switching he'll, everything he wants to get in is going to have to take a hit and that's going to make it harder for him to set up unless he's pulling real good momentum at the very beginning of the battle. Just, you know, starts off with the right Pokemon and just goes from there. Mm. Um, I mean, he has options as well to going back to support the team and get himself in a better position. But I, at the end of the day, I give him a 7 on uh, Team Synergy. Because <coughs> he has the he has a few repeating types which could be good, could be bad. It just depends on how he preps. Yeah, I I also gave him a seven, so sevens all around. Um, I think that his team looks pretty nice. I think that it's going to do decently well, as you mentioned, if he can get that momentum early on. Um, you know, even you know, leading with the the proper uh, Dynamax, or uh, if he's setting himself up, uh, you know, with with Garchomp early on, or, or whatever it may be. Um, he definitely has some potential to just carry the victory there. But if he is forced to switch, you know, which, you know, is going to happen uh, just inevitably, you know, if uh, he's got Garchomp out there and, you know, it, it kills something like it does, it does well. But, um, you know, of course, you're going to send in, you know, your ice type or whatever to go against Garchomp and he's going to have to think about how he's going to be switching his mods. Uh, if he's, you know, worried about any kind of stealth rocks, spikes, anything like that, um, while Starmie isn't susceptible to to those that much, it it simply just doesn't have a ton of HP, and to have to send in Starmie to to rapid spin, it'll it'll do it, it'll do its job, it'll get in and a rapid spin, but it will then die. Um, so it, he'll just, I don't know. I think switching is where he's going to have issues. Agreed. All right, so overall, I gave him a 66. I gave him a 72. I gave him a 74. So that means he gets a 71 overall. Brutal! All right. Well, we move on to the next team. Uh, Coach Marquise. Long time ago, he was in our draft leagues, and he's finally making a return as the Philadelphia Polyrats. He is bringing this season Aegislash, Mandibuzz, Chandelure, Milk Tank, Flygon, Behium, Tentacruel, Magnetone, Vileplume, and Aerodactyl. All right, looking at this team to start off for bulk, he has lots of it. Uh, Aegislash, Mandibuzz, Milk Tank, Magneton, Tentacruel even can take a lot of hits. Some more special defensive, some more defensive, but this team's looking good and I would give it an eight. I agree, I also gave him an eight in bulk. Um... I, I ran Tentacruel in uh, one of the last drafts, and, and it can uh, take a, a surprising number of hits, um, more than you're probably expecting. Aegislass, of course, 
Uh, H slash, of course, uh, you know, uh, used properly is going to be able to take uh, good hits. Mandibuzz as well, special defensive. Um, I agree. I think eight is is the proper rating there. I actually had about a seven, but I think I've been a bit harsh, so I'm going to jump into an eight as well. And I think for the same reasons you guys mentioned. Not, like, not much more to add. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, recovery and support. Um, recovery alone, he has a bunch of it. Mandibuzz knows thing about them. They can all help the team in some ways with health, and they can also heal up themselves. Um, Support-wise, Behem is a great Tier 5 pick to get up those screens. Mandibuzz defogs. Uh, I think Shandalor can defog. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but Flygon can get the Tailwind up to support the team's speed that it kind of lacks a little bit. Uh, there's just a lot this team can do. I mean, even Aerodactyl can set rocks. Smoke Tank can set rocks. And uh, yeah, th this team is looking pretty versatile on the support side of it. So I would Shandler give it. can't defog. No, it can't. Just oh. look it up now. Well, Aerodactyl can. And so can Mandibuzz. So, I mean, still, even with that, it's looking good. I'm going to give it a 9 for uh, support and recovery. I actually had him rated significantly lower, but to be fair, um, I think you've made some, some good points um, that I was overlooking. So I'm going to bump him up. Not to a 9, though. I think an 8. Um I think that he does have some some good support options that you've mentioned. Um, I don't know if he has everything covered that, that he'll need, um, but it, it's looking pretty good. Um, I have him at a seven, and, and I think as well, like uh, you can talk about being, him, being able to without screens, which is true, but he's got a base speed of 40, so he's not outspeeding things to set up those, those screens. He doesn't have access to Prankster to get to even patch that speed. Um, he doesn't have particularly high defenses either, so I just don't see BM really providing that screen support that you, that you think that he might be able to. Um, but the other stuff's true. You know, Mandibuzz being able to defog, Mandibuzz roosting, Miltank being able to heal itself. I think those are those will be very, very good. Um, Aerodactyl, you know, you can run a suicide lead. Um, stealth rocks and go hard at whatever's in front of him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, aside from that, I just don't know that there is a lot of recovery and support. Um, I think Seven is probably being pretty generous. All right, fair. Everyone is... A little decisive on that one, but we will move on to the speed tier. This is where I kind of take a back to it, and I kind of say, you know, a six. Most of his team's pretty middle of the road. Um, Tailwind could help his team, like I said earlier, but there's also the real slow mons that maybe Tailwind won't help them as much. Uh, and then, like you said, Behem is pretty slow, so if he wanted to get a Trick Room, he would have to really work for it. And I, I don't think Trick Room would benefit his team anyway, just looking at it face value. So, for speed tier, yeah, I would have to give him a 6. I, I gave him... No, you got that. No, you got that. So, uh... I, I gave him a 7 uh, in speed. I think that um, Aegislash, you, 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 I mean, you want it to be slower. Um, so you're not looking for, for a fast one in Aegislash. Uh, Chandelier's got you know your average speed of 80. It's going to benefit from that, uh, that Tailwind. Flygon's going to, uh, again, uh, decently quick. Uh, will benefit more from the Tailwind. Tentacruel itself is uh, very, very fast. Uh, Aerodactyl obviously very fast, so I, I think he has enough speedy mons combined with uh, the ones that will will benefit from uh, being able to uh, kind of manipulate that speed on the battlefield with with the tailwind. 
Um, and then, of course, if he can if he can keep um, Sticky Web off with the rapid spin from Tentacruel, then uh, I think he'll be set up decently well. I went with um, a pretty. I think I've gone a bit, bit harsh here, but I think I've gone I've gone for a four, and I'm going to stand by it um, because he's got some good fast flies on. He's got you know Tentacruel, Aerodactyl, Mill Tank. Mill Tank, obviously, you know deceptively, deceptively fast. I just think that there's not enough speed there to be able to do the things he's going to want to be able to do. To, to implement a strategy, I think he's going to really struggle to, you know, get those speed tears off, uh, to get those, um, to really set up with anything. Because it, sorry, let me start again. He is going to struggle to implement whatever strategy he's going to implement because the speed will let him down. I think a lot of the time, when you look at the Pokemon that he's drafted, you know, Flygon, would love a dragon dance but will be able to get a dragon dance off when something faster or with an ice type priority or an ice type move is coming out magneton not particularly fast a lot of ground coverage a lot of people have carried ground coverage <clears throat> um vileplume would love to benefit from the sun and could possibly get it from a dynamax flygons you know max flare but that's only super niche, and it's not not entirely reliable um, in a in a in a week in week out kind of basis. Um, I just think he will struggle a lot to implement a decent strategy um, each week because, and I think because the speed will let him down. Mm -hmm. right, Matt, you want to lead us away with the wall breaking? Uh, sure. So. I give him a seven in a wall breaking ability. Uh, I think that he has it in Aegislash, um, if properly used. He has it in Chandler, um, even Flygon, uh, especially you know Dynamax Flygon. I think it can put in that work um, if if needed, especially against your you know your tier three, tier four mons. Um, so I think he he has potential for it. Um, I think it's going to be hard for him to to rely on those mons uh, significantly, though. Uh, so I don't think that he's going to have an easy time of wall breaking, but but I think he has that potential. I agree with I agree with Matt, but I gave him a six. Um, I think where Eggy Slash really really benefits is using weakest policy, and um, you don't. Wait. I think it. I think um, with, with the way the PML set up, you don't really want to be setting up with weakness policy on Pokemon that can't Dynamax, which makes it. But I think it makes those Tier One Pokemon not nearly as good as what people think they could be. Um, I, I also see a you know, utility in you know setting up a Swords Dance and Shadow Sneaking a lot. And I think that could you know get in some good wall breaking there. Um, but I do think that he may struggle in that wall breaking department yeah i i i too gave him a six i wasn't give him a five uh but matt did bring up some good points about the dynamaxing option um mm. so i i'm gonna go with six i just don't see anything that screams physical like just threat right out of the gate like age of slash can be a threat aerodactyl can be a threat but nothing instantly says yeah i don't want to i don't want that mon out in front of my pokemon and well like you look at you look at you look at like cc's team right like you, you there's plenty of pokemon in there that you just don't want to see like you don't want to see salamance coming out you don't want to see um sorry i was looking to pull up a team again like you don't really want to see as Merrill. you don't really don't want to see you know a dynamax Rhyperia. like you just don't want to see those pokemon mm -hmm. But there's nothing really in my thesis team that says, oh, I really would hate to have that. Maybe Aerodactyl, but what? Aerodactyl's tier two. It can't Dynamax, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Like a Dynamax Aerodactyl would, would would strike some fear into into my heart. You know, getting a Max Knuckle on, a, on an Aerodactyl would be art, would be heartbreaking. But it's just not something that he can do. <laughs> yeah. I Like I said, I give him a six. I think... Uh... Jaden gave him a six and Matt gave him a seven. So, 
this is where we go on and see if Team Synergy will boost his ratings up a little bit. And with uh, Team Rate, uh, Team Synergy, I give him a seven. There's the pieces are there. It just depends on how he's gonna play them together. I mean, he has, I think, two U-turn, two U-turners on this team. Uh, he has a Volt Switcher, but. Uh, it's just like you you can get out of trouble but who do you go to to capitalize yeah i agree wholeheartedly joe i think that's exactly my sentiments as well the pieces are there i think i think he can benefit from you know maybe changing up a couple of his pokemon just slightly i don't know what's still available but i think you know a couple of trades in between weeks would be super beneficial for him I think he'll just have to see like uh, how he goes from week one and see uh, the Monty brings and how they work together and just uh, drop what didn't work and fill that missing piece. Well, I'm not going to be proven wrong as well. I, uh, so I gave him a seven for, for Team Synergy as well. Um, I I think that I just I don't see a solid strategy here with this team. Uh, I think he's he's almost uh, you know jack of all trades, master of none. He he's got a little bit of of each of what he needs, but not enough for any of it to truly own the role that uh, that it might need to own. So he's gonna have to be able to roll on the fly with this team. If he can do that, I think he, he can he can be a formidable opponent. Um, but if he if he comes unprepared to battles, I think um, this is a team that's going to make him regret that. Yeah. <clears throat> and that brings us to uh, 62 for me on him. So I give him a 62. Um, what do y'all rank him at? I think I gave him a 30. So 60. 30. Yep, 60. If you want to get the multiplier, I've got him at a thirty-seven, so it's seventy-two. So I, I feel maybe I've been generous, but I'm I'm gonna stick to it. <laughs> All right, and that brings us to an even sixty-four point six, which will make him a sixty-five. So he's still not the worst, but you know he's down there on on the radio. Well, I mean, there's there's Steven, so that's the. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's saving everyone from the bottom. Um, all right, now we can move on to the next team, which would be Hasim. All right, Hasim, the Holy Crusaders, or something like that. He's, his team's name is really long and weird, but <laughs> his draft was great. He has Naganadel, Halucha, Hacker. Yukumuku, which was the grossest pick of the draft. Uh, Hitmon Lee, Turtonator, Zoltion, Weezing, Vickavolt, and Grimmsnarl. Galarian Weezing, that is. No, Galarian? Galarian Weezing. And uh, Jaden, I'll let you go ahead and lead off with this one. Sounds good. Um, Hasim was the, was the first one I draft. was the first one um I looked at when I was um, grading these, and I think maybe I, I feel maybe I don't like what I've done now. But I've given him a seven overall for bulk, and I, look, I'm just going to stick with it the whole way through. Um, I think that his team is good. I think he's got good defensive options. I don't know what else those defensive Pokemon provide him. Um, you can get some jank off with Pukamuki. You can get some Willowis off with Weezing. Um, but I wonder a lot if those Pokemon will even, oh, particularly Pukamuki, right? And I've got to pick up Pukamuki a little bit. Pukamuki can get, you know, soak soft and toxic, so you can, you can poison steel types. But mm -hmm. I don't know whether that will convert into the three points that he needs to be able to progress to the finals. Like, will he be able to rely on Pikachu each week, or will he need to provide other things, or bring other things each week? So, if you isolate Pikachu, 
you all of a sudden you don't really have a lot of options in terms of defense. Um, your Grim Snarl there for dual screens, which is fantastic. I just think that maybe his team is a little bit lacking in the bulk department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight natural bulk, it's lacking, but he does have support that can get him there. Uh, Pukumuku, of course, is a pain in the ass wall to deal with. Turtonator, he likes to use more offensive with the sh uh, shell smashing. So I don't see it being a, a huge uh, wall to deal with, but it might be a free setup opportunity for him if it comes in on the right stuff. And uh, Weezing is a great physical wall, but there's not much he can do, like you said, other than you know, will o wisping or getting a toxic or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what'd you what you rate him? Um, I give him a seven. I've uh, I've given him a six in bulk. I think that um, that Grim Snarl is is what he's going to be relying on for his mons to be able to take hits. Um, he's got a little bit uh, of bulk, as previously mentioned, uh, Pikimuku, uh, uh, wheezing a little bit. Um, even I, I would go so far as to say even. Uh, Hitmon Lee with a, a special defense of, of 110 is, is not not bad. Um, but I think overall, if he doesn't have his screens up, he's going to have a hard time taking it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, that brings us to the recovery and support of his team. He does have some recovery options, of course. Again, Yukumuku. Uh, can recover itself. Uh, Weezing can pain split. And, uh, I mean, Hitman Lee can get Drain Punch, but I don't know how, how versatile that will be. Alucha, of course, roosting itself. And Vikavolt can also roost. So that adds to the recovery option he has. Um, I think the real thing that carries his team is the support option he has. He can toxic things, he can get screens up, he can will o if he wants to. He can get the webs up to, I mean, his team's fast, pretty fast. But to, like, dissuade any scarpers or anything like that, the webs will help the team with that. So, I mean, for support, I would have to give him an uh, 8. I would agree with that. Um, I think I must have misclicked in my in my thing because I actually hang down for a five, but I think I meant I, I think I'm, I did mean eight. Um, I was looking at my you know, the notes that I sent to the, to the chat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did mean an eight on that one, and for the same reasons, um, he's got very very good you know, support options, and I think the um, you know I think it'll be you know Grim Snarl is always handy to have with the screen support. You know, you've got a lot of rooster options, you've got a lot of natural recovery options. Um, yeah, I think he's done well on the, on the um, support. And he's also got, you know, my, my favourite thing at the moment, my favourite mechanic at the moment, Sticky Webs. I think that really helps your team a lot as well. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would agree he's got some decent support. Uh, a couple things you guys pointed out that I didn't uh, notice. So I have raised his score to a 7. I think that his recovery is still lacking, though. Um, I think that uh, in terms of roosting, Halucha, honestly, the, I mean, if you don't build it right, I feel like roost is a, a waste of a move uh, oftentimes with Halucha. Um, yeah. uh, the same could potentially be said for, for Vikavolts as well. Um, mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> I don't know how much recovery he'll actually have. Pain split is mediocre at best, um, I, I feel so. Um, I've given him a seven, uh, but I do think he has some good support options. Uh, even Grim Snarl aside, the the sticky webs, the the toxic spikes, uh, rapid spin with him only. Um, I think he's he's got a decent setup as far as that goes. All right, and that brings us to the speed tiers. Matt, I'll let you lead this one. Yeah, so I've actually rated him a nine on speed. I, I think his. Uh, most of his mons are are very very quick, um, and the the ones that aren't are they're not there for that reason. So, um, let me. Uh, I mean, he's got the the sticky Weber um, to to help manipulate the speed on the battlefield. 
Um, the uh, Hitmonlee was unburdened, uh, is going to be fast. Halucha, again, unburdened, fast. Nagana Dell is fast. Um, there's, there's a lot of speed on this team to worry about. Yeah, I would agree. I gave... oh, go ahead, Jade. No, oh, I gave him a 10. I think this is about as good as speed tiers as you get, really. Um, inside Trick Room, I'll start with Trick Room because it's the one that I often miss. But you got Vicar Vault, Weezing, and Pukamuka to really, you know, soak up that Trick Room, those trick room turns. And outside, I mean, even Turtle Man to an extent as well. Um, but outside of Trick Room, as Matt was saying, you got those unburdened options. Turn out can Shell Smash. Um, Vicar Vault makes everything so, so much faster with um, like something that na- think, makes things naturally faster. So Pokemon like Haxorus, they're pr- it's not too bad with wind speed, but it makes them so, so formidable with, with the combination of um, Sticky Web out on the field. And I think this is as good as it, as good as it gets when it gets to speed control. Yeah, and I think Weezing is going to be a big part of it because like you said, the unburdened boosting. Halucha and Hitmon Lee can get those uh, misty seeds and really take off. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just regular wheezing. It's not Galarian wheezing, is it? Uh, yeah, I think Galarian. I think it's Galarian. But either way, oh, I think right. uh, Cantonian wheezing even gets uh, misty terrain now. Yeah, it does. Oh, right. oh there you go. So, yeah, I, get, I give him a 10 as well for the speed. And then that brings us to wall breakers and he looking at his team he clearly has the wall breakers axers naganadel are the big one turtonator and hitmonlee are the ones that can set up halucha of course is a threat in its own right it can set itself up and just get it going and then uh yeah every everything pretty much everything on his team can punch holes in some way, shape, or form. So I would give him a nine on that one. I gave him an eight on wall breaking, um, and I think because oh, look, I, aside from Nagandel, Nagandel can just sit in on things and and will just hurt a lot. Will will absolutely just destroy anything without any hesitation. Um, but aside from Naganadel, um, things will need a little bit of setup for the others to really, you know, really punch home. And I think maybe um, maybe this has been a consistent theme for the whole team. Maybe I'm missing the point a little bit. But I think um, <clears throat> Pokemon, some Pokemon can naturally just absolutely wreck things, and maybe you can't draft every single one of them. And I think that's probably why not. No one's really got a ten on the um, wall breaking capability for me. Um, mm-hmm. But this is again about as about as close as it gets to you know perfection in terms of wall breaking. You got Jolteon that's just fast and you know you can put him in specs and vault switch out of things and it really does hurt. Well, nothing really enjoys a vault switch from Jolteon unless it's a ground type Pokemon. Um, then you got yeah, hit one leader can Dynamax and set up its own um, unburden given the right circumstances. Um yeah, very good. Yeah, I uh, I, I agree. Um, I I actually originally rated him as a nine for wall breaking. I'm actually going to lower it to eight because I do think that there are some mons that are going to require setup, um, and other mons that uh, may be relying on. Well, m- more more like uh, like his halucha. Um, not being able to Dynamax, um, Haxorus not being able to Dynamax. Um, Haxorus sh- should do fine on its own. Uh, Halucha could potentially have some trouble. Uh, and then just uh, you know the the other mons need a little bit of setup. So I have lowered him to an eight, but still definitely very formidable. Um, great wall breaking uh, potential there. Uh, it, he's my first opponent, so not looking forward to that. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, I, like I, think, I, I think I'm going to do an 8 as well. I had 9, but I think I'm going to go 8. But that brings us to uh, Team Synergy. And uh, Team Synergy, what do I have? I had 
Sorry, I think I had a seven for Team Synergy. Let me just double check this. Yes, Team Synergy, I had seven. And I think the reason why I had seven is because, you know, Jolteon and Vicar Vault are your two main, your two main pivots here. And can be easily countered by any any ground type Pokemon. It can be a tier five ground type Pokemon and it'll, it'll stop the pivots. <laughs> but in saying that, is, but in saying that, this team doesn't really care for pivoting anyway. Like you just, most of the time, you, you're putting a Pokemon out and your this job is to bust it up, bust open the other team. Like this team is pretty, pretty horrific in, to the face. You got your, as soon as sticky webs go up, you're in trouble. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I will also give it a seven. Uh, like you said, the only pivoting options he has is electric, but obviously they, they're here to punch holes. Uh, I don't know. I feel if he has to hard switch a lot, it, it, it could potentially hurt his team a little bit if he's not going into a defensive mod. But if he's not having to be forced into playing behind, he can take away. He could take uh, the, the W pretty easy. If you let him, I've uh, I've given him a seven, but I think I'm actually going to raise it to an eight, uh, just because I think that the uh, the combo of being able to use the, the misty terrain with two of his unburdened mons, I think that that uh, is something I hadn't considered previously. That uh, can just be uh, really really good, set him up really really well early on in the game, um, and I think that it's gonna gonna suit him well. On top of Actually, that's, a, that's a good point, Matt. I'll, I'll raise one to an eight too. I sit at the seven. All right, so I got an eighty for Coach Hassan here. Uh, I got eighty-two. I've given him. Let's see. I've changed my scores, and now my math doesn't make sense. And it's <laughs> midnight for me. 38 times 2. 76. 76. Yep, there it is. I, I feel like uh, I'm, I may regret that slightly lower score uh, here in a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that gives him a grand total of 79. All right, next up we have Jeremy, coach of the Dragon Knights. And, of course, this first pick, he picked his mascot pokemon of dragonite then with this tier two he went ahead and picked up primarina then bisharp marowak alolan heracross septile rhydon rotom frost or beetle and nihilego all right here we go going with bulk his team is naturally bulky Bisharp can take hits. Marowak is, of course, a slow, healthy hitter. Rhydon has HP of a beast. Or Beetle is a tank. Primarina can take hits and dish him out. Dragonite with multi-skill. That gives it a big boost. I would say an 8 overall. Yeah, I've forgotten about multi-scale. Uh... I had him at a seven. Um, that I think that multi scale is gonna bump it up to an eight for me, uh, combined with uh, just I, I guess I, I gotta look into Orbital. It's another ugly mod that I've never used. So, <laughs> um, but uh, if if he's got a little bit of bulk there, um, I can I think I can justify an eight. Yeah, Orbital is like ninety something defense, ninety something special. Oh, he has 110 and 120, so oh, yeah. better, definitely yeah. better than I thought. There you uh, go. So I can uh, jump up to it. I had him at a 7 as well, but I'm thinking probably 8. But uh, there's a general comment about Jeremy and his team anyway. Like, Jeremy is an absolute beast when it comes to drafts. Like, you could give him a Dunstaff and he will just do wonders with it. Like, mm. it, like he, he is always a threat in every draft that he's taken part in. You ne you're never comfortable in a game against Jeremy. Just to put it, you know, bluntly. Um, but, you know, 
I would give him an eight for the ball because for the exact reasons that you said, um, he's got multi-scale options. He's got good, well, he's got naturally good cause, which I think helps with his team synergy for a start, but it also helps with his um, with his general bulk too. Mm -hmm. You can switch into things that um, that can take a hit, and I think that you know overall, it's you know, those are good options for him. Oh yeah, and a lot of his team doesn't share weaknesses either, so that's really <clears throat> boosting him up there. Yeah, hundred percent. And Primarina's a bitch, so. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to recovery and support. And looking at his team for face value, there isn't much recovery for him. I don't feel. Uh, Dragonite, of course, gets Roost, but other than that, uh, maybe Drain Punch on Heracross. Uh, recover on Ore Beetle. That's pretty much it. But on the support side, what, go ahead. I was gonna say, I just think that um, the team doesn't really need that kind of recovery, recovery options, though. Like, no, it's, it's not sort of part. It's just not a thing it. that you need to recover. No. He still gets rated on it, though. Yeah, but since we're rating it, uh, <laughs> he doesn't have it. <laughs> uh, obviously, his team looks amazing, and I wish I could draft this good. But, uh, yeah, his recovery is not great, but his um, support is. And Ward Beetle with the screens, it can sticky web, it can U-turn, and that's just one mon. Then you got Rocks coming in with right on. Uh, I think... Uh, does Heracross get a uh, rapid spin? No. No? Okay. I think it would be unintuitive to, to run um, rapid spin on Heracross too. But, I mean, it might, it might get it as an option, but I just think it's not something you know, generally do. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> just looking at support uh, options. Dragonite's obviously a defogger. Um, I think Orbeetle gets defrogged. Is that one I'm not sure of? I know Rotom gets defrog. Defrog. Defog. Um, mm. But uh, yeah. Yeah, defrog. And I just think he has a lot of good support options. And that's good enough to get him to a, an 8 for me. You know yeah, what? That was, that, that was a little generous. I'm going to say 7. I tend to agree with you. Um, I had him at a six initially, but I think a seven is probably more in order. Like he's, he's especially all beetle. Um, you know, providing that sticky web support, providing those screen supports. Again, I th I'm not entirely sure about it. All beetle speed, so I have to. Do I should have double checked it before we yeah, nice. start rating. That, that's not. That's not terrible, honestly. Yeah. To get you know, if you're up against a slow Pokemon, you can get a reflect off or a light screen off, and it'd be. And it'd be just as good. Um, you know, sticky, you know, sticky web down as well. And all of a sudden, his Pokemon are a lot, lot faster. Um, and it's saying that as well. I think he's, he's going he's gonna to love fighting. Um, he's going to love fighting teams that have sticky web because of the because he's holding a bi sharp. And defiant bi sharp is just going to absolutely go nuts oh, on yeah. opponents. Um, so. I think overall, yeah, he's um Brown Frost gets Willow Wisp as well. You know, providing those um you know, the crippling burns to physical attackers. I think he's just got um a lot going on for him in his in his um support options. So I think a seven. Mm -hmm. I've actually listed him at a six as well, but uh, again some some good points made. I think I'll bump him up to a seven. Uh I do think he's going to struggle a little bit with um, with his weakness to, to rock here with some of these mons, especially you know, if, uh, if you can get your stealth rocks up and everything. Um, but nothing nothing too much to worry about if he can you know get that orb beetle out to uh, to do the rapid spin and, and have it you know survive because I think it I think it can. I think it has the, the defensive nature to, to be able to do that. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll list him at a seven there. And that brings us to speed tiers. Uh, speaking of sticky web, um, I honestly see this team has great speed tiers. I mean, there's a lot of slow mons on it, and 
you know, decently speedy mon, but nothing that screams it's super fast. But if Orbeetle can actually get those webs up and support his team, I think it's going to benefit it a lot. And that's why I'm giving it a 9 for speed. Because other, other teams can use sticky webs and such. But that's not really going to hurt this team. I mean, the slow mons are already slow. Uh, Dragonite and Rona Frost can't be touched by it. If anything, it'll affect Nihilego, but Nihilego can get around it. And, um, of course, like, uh, Jaden said, Bisharp Defiant Boots, you just asking for trouble at that point. So, I think it'll dissuade a lot of teams from bringing Sticky Webs to begin with. Uh, I think I've, I think I've got to disagree. Um, I, I think that he, if he's unable, he, I feel like he's relying a lot on, on his Orbeetle. Um, for for uh, these hazards, uh, and Orbital can can only do so much. Uh, it's you know being bug psychic, it, psychic, it has uh, quite quite a few weaknesses to it. Um, I've given him a seven for speed. I I could I could maybe justify an eight. Um, I do think he has some good mons uh, in terms of speed, but um, the ones that are fast, I've I don't know. I'm not terribly worried outside of Dragonite. Uh, Sceptile, you know, it, it is fast, but um, I'm not worried. You know, when someone sends in a Sceptile, I'm, I'm not worried about a Sceptile. Bisharp's got a blow average speed of 70. The Defiant is great, but if it if it can't outpace, uh, you know, a, a good fighting type move is is going to take it out. Um, so I I just I think he is lacking somewhat in the speed. Uh, the Dragonite is fast. Um, if he's not able to get his uh, sticky webs up, he, he may find himself relying on his, his Dragonite, maybe his Nihiligo, uh, a little bit uh, too much to, to handle speed. I think uh, I, I'm more inclined to agree with Joe. I think, you know, um, I, I rated him as a nine, and I think, he, yes, he will rely on his Orbeetle a lot. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, though. I think if he runs him as a lead, even and just runs, or even as like a mid-game, um, you know, sticky web user, I think that's not a bad thing. I think um, it's a lot of pressure for the Orbeetle, but the Orbeetle, if, it, if its sole job is to get webs down and maybe get some screens up, then it's done a then it's done a good service for its team. Um, so I think that's not really too much of an issue um but in terms of like other speed tiers like i, I like septile for you know the unburdened boosts i also like heragross because um i'm not, I'm not actually in front of my laptop at the moment but um heracross can dynamax and, de and can boost its speed with aerial ace um you know making his naturally hard-hitting pokemon super quick as well um I think he's got. I think he does have a lot going for him in terms of speed. Um, and I think if he's worried about you know a fire type move on Bisharp, he's got a lot of Marowak there to to you know fight that immunity, get him with that immunity, uh, and he can also boost that Marowak speed with Flame Charge. I think he's got a lot, a lot of speed um, control, and I think he's got a lot of um, ability to be able to navigate his weaknesses as well. Yeah, you make some good points. Uh, I think I can definitely justify an eight for speed. All right, and then that brings us to wall breaking, and I gotta give him a seven. Uh, it, his whole wall breaking ability is carried by Nihilego, possibly getting off a meteor beam, or even a Dynamax Sceptile, in my opinion. Um, he does have really good mons that can set up and attack, but if we're judging it based on you know, just something coming out and just firing off a move. Uh, I would have to say his biggest threats would be Nihilego and maybe a Dragonite, depending on how it's built. So I would give him uh, a seven. On, uh, seven or eight? Which one did I say earlier? He said seven. Said seven. seven? Okay, then yeah, seven is going to be what I give him there. 
Uh, I, I agree for, for a lot of the same points. Uh, I think also, uh, Jaden, you make a, a good point of, of a Dynamax Heracross, um, you know, boosting its own speed, uh, already hitting pretty hard. I, I think that that is something um, to, to contend with and, and to worry about. Um, I think in this uh, in this league, we are going to have to pay very close attention to the um, tier three and lower mons that, that people are bringing. Um, because that's they're going to be kind of the sleepers in the teams, you know, where we have to uh, think about what they're going to be dynamaxing. So um, uh, I can, I, I would say I would give him a, a seven uh, as well. I've always considered that the tier three to tier five Pokemon, the quality of your tier three to tier five Pokemon really sets you sets you up for how the rest of your team, how the whole, how the whole draft goes. You can have one very good tier one Pokemon, but as soon as that goes down, if you have absolute garbage in your tier three to five, you're in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but for wall breaking, I actually gave Jeremy a nine. And I think, you know, Guts Heracross can sit and punch and will hurt things. Um, you know, if he's facing, like, this is a little bit niche, but, you know, the, again, the Defiant High Sharp, if he's facing Intimidator, if he's facing Sticky Webs, he can get up to plus two fairly easy. Uh, I'm not saying it's, you know, particularly, he's not always going to be get up to get the plus two always, um, but there's also going to be situations where he can get the plus four pretty quite, like, pretty straightforward. Pretty, pretty straightforwardly, if he gets the Sticky Web down and gets Intimidated or gets a parting shot off on it, it could go to plus four, and sucker punches will hurt it. Will hurt the opposition. Um, Alola Marilak hits hard naturally. Um, the thick club, um, it, it can and does do a lot of damage with Poltergeist. The base 110 ghost type move, but really, really doesn't. No one really likes to take those. Um, and I think Dragonite as well. Dragonite is a little bit of setup to you know really start get to really get going, but. Dragonite is also an option for just sitting and punching things, and it can and it can set up nicely with the Marvel scale or multi scale, mm -hmm. whichever the ability is. <clears throat> All right, and that brings us to Team Synergy, and I'm gonna have to give him an eight. His Team Synergies look great. He has options to move around, and pivot. Uh, he has great. Uh, type coverage so he can easily switch out of bad situations it's just gonna it's just gonna depend on how well he can set up and uh, get to the end game with the win I also gave him yeah. and much of the same reasons pivoting is great um, he's, he doesn't have a lot of pivoting options but the pivot options that he has are fantastic Premier being able to flip turn, right? Um, being able to vault switch, um, those are always fantastic options. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying before, Fire Sharp can always switch into Mar Alola Marowak to avoid the physical, well, to avoid those fighting type moves. Um, Heracross can jump into, can switch to Rotom, like a hard switch to Rotom or Ride On to avoid those flying type attacks. I think he's got some good options there to, you know, good. Um, you know, good cover, good um, team synergy, good team support. Mm -hmm. and a, team to look, a team, definitely a team to watch out for. Yeah, I, I agree. I've also given him an eight. Um, I, I think he, he has a good balance to his team. Um, he has plenty of options in terms of, um, you know, support and, and uh, putting up hazards, things like that. Um, I do think he he'll find himself uh, relying heavily on one or two uh, particular mons each battle, depending on his style. But uh, overall, I, th I think he has a team that looks like it's going to work pretty well together. All right, what is y'all's rating for Jeremy here? Seventy-six. Seventy-two and seventy-six. <clears throat> um, I changed my a couple of mine. I was going to go back to my thing. What did I say? Fisher sure said eight for bulk, uh, seven for recovery, fifteen, nine for speed tiers. It's twenty-four, thirty-two, forty, so eighty. So eighty all up, yeah. And that gives them a even seventy-eight 
score is Good overall. Work, Jeremy. All right. Next up, we have the quackiest man I know, Coach Quake, a.k.a. Coach Quack, um, coach of the Florida for Alligators. And he drafted the abysmal abomination of all Pokemon draft leagues, Ditto, with his first pick. <laughs> then he decided to go bulky with Porygon 2 and Milotic. Went on ahead and continued his draft with Durant, Mr. Mind, Stunfisk, Unovian, Malamar, Sandaconda, Colossal, and Dracozolt. I think it's actually Mr. Rhyme. Oh, I said Mr. Rhyme, didn't I? I think you said mine. Eh, we'll, no, I wasn't paying attention. We'll watch it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how do y'all feel about the bulk of this team? I quite like it. Um, I think when I was when I was creating these teams, I must have been in a foul mood because I gave him a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I must have just finished um, doing um, Stevens, but um, <laughs> no, because then the scores would be higher. Yeah, it would be much higher. You're right. Maybe I'll, maybe um, I, I did Quakes first, the Quakes first, and then then did Stevens, and then everyone else was sort of high after that. But yeah, I gave him a seven, and I don't know that it's necessarily fair. So I'll give him a I'll give him an eight. Um, because Porygon Sue and the Milotic core um, is, is they're both extremely naturally bulky Pokemon. Santa Condor is also quite bulky. Um, and Stunfisk is deceptively bulky too. Um, so I think, you know, he's got some good Pokemon there. And he's got good options to, you know, support the Milotic with the electric, with the electric type attacks. He can switch into Stunfisk, he can switch into Santa Condor. Um, so I think, you know, overall he's got, he's got a good thing going. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with you with the 8. Um, of course, I give him an 8 and not, you know, like a 9 or a 10 because Porygon 2, it's, it's bulky, but without the Evil Light, you can take it down pretty easily. Milotic, of course, the Flame Orb boosting its defense is fantastic, but uh, the burns on it uh, continually uh, giving it residual damage throughout the battle and him having to He'll probably have to really force himself into, uh, what do you call it, recovering in a bad situation or something, and you never know. But, uh, yeah, his team is pretty bulky, uh, other than that, and uh, I can't wait to see how that goes in battle. I'm not sure if I've ever actually battled him, and I'm, and I'm really looking forward to battling him this time around, because it'll be the good, um, the good alligator versus crocodile fight, right? It'll be the gator versus gator <laughs> rivalry. Or, or Gators good. versus Crocodile. <laughs> I uh, I've better. given him a I've given him a seven. <laughs> um, I uh, I think that the the bulk of his bulk is is in his T two picks, and I think that we're likely to see both of them in uh, almost every battle that he does. Um, which you know that that's not necessarily bad. I think they're both they're they're good bulky options. Um, but, uh, I think that they're the only ones really to, to worry about Santa Conda a little bit, um, if, if he goes that route, but, um, I, I see him bringing Porygon to, uh, I actually, I don't think I've ever done a battle against him where he didn't bring Porygon to, um, <laughs> I suppose, you're not I, lying. I suppose another issue with that, I another issue with you, that he even does have with these bulk, right? He's got bulk for the sake of bulk. He doesn't have bulk. Like, Porygon 2 and Milotic really rely on those, you know, toxic store strategies, which is okay. But, like, you, in terms of, like, actually being able to dish damage out and, you know, it can be the difference. Like, being able to have a bulky Pokemon that can dish out damage can be the difference between getting one point in a, in a battle for the, for the time up and three points in securing your place in a playoff. So I don't know necessarily that Porygon 2 and Milotic are, are they're good, bulk, they're good bulky Pokemon, but I think they're bulky for the sake of bulky. Yeah. I agree. Agreed. All right, and that brings us to uh, recovery and support. Um, <clears throat> I don't feel he has great recovery on this team. Of course, he has Milotic, Porygon too, um, but that's pretty much it. Everything on his else on his team doesn't really recover in itself in any way, and there's not really a way Porygon and Milotic pass those recoveries on to them. 
So I I feel like it's kind of lackluster in that department. Uh, support, I mean, he has support options. Mr. Rhyme, of course, being a big one, a rapid spinner. Uh, screens, he can even get rid of screens with his ability. He doesn't even have to push a move. Um, Malamar, of course, can set trick room for his team, which obviously that could possibly help him in some ways because his team is rather slow. And he only has a few mods that can really take advantage of speed. And um, Santa Conda setting sand is also a great positive since he decided to go with that sand spit. To, and he picked up Draco's ult in the final round of the draft. Yeah, I, I agree uh, for the most part. I've given him a 7 in recovery and support. Yeah, I'm uh, going with Again, I'm well. oh, sorry, I didn't wait for your score. No, no yeah, that's um, my bad. No, you're good. I think that he, again, he's relying on his T2s here for the recovery. I think when planning against uh, Quack, it's going to be, if you plan for these two T2 mons and you can get past them, I think it's going to make the battles very hard for him. Uh, he does have some decent support, um, but I do, I do feel that in terms of recovery, again, it's these two mons that are carrying it for him. <clears throat> no, I also gave him a seven. Um, just to touch on something that neither of, that hasn't been brought up yet. Uh, Santa Conda is um, other ability shed skin can help him with um, with rest support too. Mm -hmm. So potentially he could you know recover. Could, Santa Conda could rest support or could heal itself by using rest. It's a bit of a you know it's, it's jankier, but yeah. it's still there. And I'd... if he doesn't feel the need to bring Jericho's result in a particular week, which I Look, I think he'd probably be likely he'd, be, he'd bring Drake's ult most weeks as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's also, that's also an option. That is an option, but I feel like you don't bring Santa Conda if you don't bring Drake's ult. And vice mm -hmm. versa. So I, I feel like <clears throat> those two are going to be really relying on each other. More Drake's ult on Santa Conda than anything. But... Yeah. Which right there, you know, if, if I'm right about his D2s, then that's four of the mons that you can plan for each week uh, for for him to bring, uh, inevitably. And then, I mean, once you, go, once you go to wall breakers as well, you got Durant, and that's, that's five. <laughs> yeah, and, and then... You know, he's tier one, six, there we go. <laughs> There's his team right back. there. That's his team every week. Yeah, Porygon 2. I did have Porygon 2, Miles, Nick, Durant, Santa Conda, Drake Azult. There we go, ladies and gents. <laughs> right. so that brings us to the speed tier um i don't see much speed on his team aside from durant whatever ditto copies and draco's ult <laughs> if he gets the sand up i everything else is pretty middle of the road or slow and i don't think trick room is enough he, don't, he doesn't have enough option with trick room to to keep this team rolling in a way to win with Trick. I agree wholeheartedly there. Um, I, he's speeding the options so he's reliant on other things doing his job. It's just not something I really see him being able to really help with. Like, he can't really do much with his speed. Mm -hmm. He can't really... Like, he really has to rely on a certain condition being met before he's Pokemon or fast. Yeah, and because so, of that... I'm giving him a five. I gave him a six. I was a bit more generous. I, I gave him a six as well. Anything you want to add on to that, Matt? Uh, they're slow as shit, man. What are you doing, Quack? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this is why you're his uh, favorite. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a history. Um, he's my PML boyfriend. Don't tell. <laughs> um, I, I think that uh, you know uh, he can he can throw out a Malamar um, with contrary, and you know maybe get uh, a speed boost from some from some sticky webs um, if he's looking for some speed. But uh, that's I think he's just lacking. Honestly, is what it is. Well, that brings us to wall breakers, and I give him a quack six. is lacking. Quack is lacking. <laughs> you, you quack a lacking. <laughs> 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 yeah he's We're lacking quack. he's lacking in the uh the wall breaking department in my opinion 
I mean, he does have Drake's ult. He does have Durant. Durant is the Dynamax option here. Uh, of course, whatever Ditto goes into can be a wall breaker. It could not be. I mean, he will most likely be heavily reliant on the, that choice scarf as he usually is. So even if he does switch into and copy a wall breaker, he will be stuck with one move. And I just don't think that's enough to punch holes for this team. He has too much bulk, not enough offense, in my opinion. And that's what I gave him a 6 for. Yeah, yeah, it's falling off that. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with that. I agree with those, that statement. Um, he's really only got Durant as his main um, attacker, really. Like, Mr. Rhyme has some good special attacking options, but it's got it's a, it's very frail. It's, it's very a punk frail. Bitch. <laughs> it's a punk bitch. <laughs> and I mean, even Durant, even Durant's like, it's like a hot day in the sense, it's gonna be. You know, mm -hmm. roasted, and, and we all love you know smacking a Durant with a fire type move. It's the best feeling it's in the world. Uh, oh, <laughs> so good, so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Durant very dangerous when it's Dynamax and one and um, set once it sets up, but it's very hard to stop. Mm -hmm. So I give him a six for his um for his um wall breaking ability. And I think Durant carries most of it. Um, Drake Assault as well can also do some damage, uh, but it again relies on the sand, um, which may or may not happen. I mean, his, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but sand, I, I guess he can Dynamax and he can set up uh, the sands uh, with that, but otherwise, Sandaconda is going to have to get hit uh, with, a, with a physical move, right? Yeah, and even then, you can kind of stall out Sand by making Santa kind of sit in there and not die. And you can play out Sand that way, so Drake's all doesn't even get to use it or abuse it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Um, I've given him a six as well. I, I think he, uh, again, I, I feel like his team that he's going to bring each week is is fairly predictable um and if he doesn't bring what you predict that might actually be in your favor i would say quack maybe look into like a eject button sand spit combo maybe i don't know if that works but you might want to look just, into just get hippopotamus <laughs> get get gigalith get something sturdy yeah something reliable Right, and that brings us to oh, team... lack, like wow. a Chevy. <laughs> like a Chevy truck. <laughs> this is why I drive a ship. Um, team Synergy, though, I'm giving them a five. There is a lot of weird, different components on this team that could or could not work. And I'm going towards more. It's going to struggle to get going. I, I've given him a six. Um, perhaps being a little generous, uh, <laughs> I, I would agree. I know he's uh, he's recently traded Stunfisk, uh, which of course we're not rating that. What did he trade Stunfisk for? Oh, it was really tough. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's really tough for yeah. week, week one. Really tough would be a good pickup for him in the T five yeah. slot. I agree. I agree. Not that he'll use it because it's not part of the six that that we've planned for him to use, but. Um, it, it was a good switch. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I think he's got little bits here and there of his team that'll that'll work together. But as a whole, uh, I just don't see it coming together. Um, I gave him a seven. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I just got a you know, COVID brain and just things have, things have really not worked out for me. <laughs> you know? um, but I gave him a seven and... I was thinking, looking back, I'm not entirely sure. I think, I think Quack is an accomplished battler. I think he'll, he, he'll nab a few wins. And I think he'll make his team work. Um, I think Durant will, is, I think as long as he's the, it's gonna be the, it's gonna be the story of Durant and the five sacks. I think. Yeah. If he's, if the, if the other five Pokemon can take out enough of your opponent so that Durant can come in and finish in reverse sweep, I think he'll. 
I think he'll find that he's going to be okay. I, I, think, I think with this team, he was so excited about finally not being in the middle of the pack. He kind of drafted one team to start, and then he drafted a completely different team coming back down from Tier 5. Mm-hmm. He was just like, let me see what I can get out of this. But overall, I gave him a 62, and Quack, Quake, you know we love you, man. We're just giving you a hard time. Uh, but yeah, it's a 62 I love you a overall lot. for me. <laughs> uh, I gave him a 70 overall. Uh, 64. All right, and that brings him... But to- I'm not- I do have a pretty wild prediction about. I do have a pretty wild prediction about Quack though. I think he'll finish in that fourth place. I think he'll just miss out on the playoff spot. <laughs> I I think that is an accurate prediction um, for every draft. <laughs> That's a high tier <laughs> prediction right there. Um. All right, and lastly but not leastly, we saved the worst for last. Ooh, the disgusting is we lose Steven again. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's just Joe's team Back again. Right. That's all. It's Back the same team. It's the most bring disgusting up, team. Up. I didn't even bring bother rating. Uh, we got Coach Matt of the Blades. Hey, Matt, you remember when you used to be called the Dindalum Blades? Uh, no. Uh, I remember <laughs> you used to call me that because you didn't know how to spell Dendamil, uh, which oh. is a town in, in Kalos. But uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Give me shit, motherfucker. <laughs> but now he has this beautiful, shiny uh, Blades logo right here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you for that. And he went ahead and drafted pretty much a sand team, just like me. He was like, Joe's doing it. Why not? He went mm-hmm. Excadrill, Komo'o, Ninetales Alolan, Galvantula, Jellison, Talonflame, Hoofa Grigus, Sigilet. Stoutland and Tyranitar, and I honestly think he drafted a better sand team than me. <laughs> uh, he's, he's drafted a better sand team than you, and he's got nine tails below. <laughs> 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 Oof. Oh, this is the first time I've seen uh, that team without Dublin. I'm very shocked. I'm very... Oh, it's, f- it's fucking killing me, Jaden. It is. It's, it took everything it's... to not draft it. You took, you took two like, ghost types. And, no, you, yeah, you took two ghost types and neither were you played. Yep. Oh, I'm very shocked, honestly. I was, it's, it's, it's shaking me to my core. Matt, come to, Matt has actually come to win. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> he's going he's gonna, to uh, put the blade on his team on week five. The last week to change something, he's just be like, which Pokemon do I not use? He's going to be like, all right, switch it out. All right, how'd you go with Bulk? Go for it. Oh, I gave him a seven for Bulk. I think he's got, you know, pretty good naturally bulky car. Come on, um, you know, Tyranitar, very bulky, especially once it gives its own sand up. <clears throat> Cafagorigus can take a hit. Um, always, always very good options. Um, Alola Nine Tails can definitely, you know, provide some, you know, support with the Elorora Veil once it gets set up. Um, so I think he's got some good options there for. Um, for that, for that bulk. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give him an eight. Uh, between Cofagrigus and Jellicent, I know they share a weakness, but not a lot of people have drafted ghost types. I mean, I know ghost type moves are also common, but I feel like uh, that core of physical defense, special defense is pretty good. And of course, he has Stoutland to counter any ghost types that try to bother that there with the neutrality to go he's also got Tyranitar he's also got Tyranitar too oh yeah Tyranitar can tear through those things I mean and Tyranitar can take some hits and uh, especially with the sand stream it's going to boost its special defense even more so I'm going to go ahead and give him an 8 in full cool dope recovery all right, recovery and uh, oh, support. There you go. Um, let's see. He does have some decent recovery options. Uh, Kofagrigus gets pain split. Sigilyph gets roost. Jellicent goes ahead and gets recover. 
um, Talonflame as a rooster as well, but you ain't gonna really see it doing that. Uh, he does have rocks and Tyranitar or Excadrill or Copagrigus, whichever way he likes to go. And uh, he can get Ninetales in to get a cheeky Aura. What's it called? Aura Veil. There we go. Aurora Veil. Cool. Yeah. Aurora Veil, if he needs to. So he has he has plenty of support options. He even has Excadrill, Excadrill to rapid spin and get a speed boost. And Clark can bring it the stealth rocks. Same as Tyranitar. Stoutland, I think, also gets stealth rock. I don't know if Stoutland gets stealth rock, but it might. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it, I thought it did, but it might not. I'm gonna look it up now. <laughs> I need to know. But yeah, Citralif also gets the Tailwind ability. So, I mean, even if Tyranitar can't help uh, some of this team with speed boosting, uh, we they can still get it. And yeah, it, it has a lot of potential. I'm going to go with the 8 here as well. Yeah, look, I haven't done the 6, but I think that's unfair. I think that's very, very harsh. And I think I'm going to you know, go with an 8 as well. Um, things I didn't consider, you know, oh, a lot of things he said I didn't consider. Um, Galvantula gets the webs, which I think is... It's a, it, I'm a sucker for webs. Oh, yeah. And I say it every time. And I think that just makes the team a lot better. Um... Uh, it makes any you know, you know, it, it makes any balanced team very, very good. Mm. Um, it makes it you know, but makes a bulky Pokemon super hard to kill because they're always moving first and they're gonna hit hard. Um, so I think overall, I think um, very, very good in terms of support options, and especially the Tyranitar and Excadrill combo. So the the Sand Rush capability or even Sand Force. We can get webs up, get webs and sand force down the land. It's gonna, it's gonna, you know, be really hard to stop. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll let you go ahead and do the speed tiers. Ah, uh, speed tiers. I gave him a nine. Um, I think he's got excellent control over the speed. Um, I think his only issue will be if he, um, if Trick Room pops up. <clears throat> but I think he's got enough. You know, defensive Pokemon to be able to weather the um, Trick Room good well enough. I don't know that a lot of Tower teams have actually drafted a lot of Trick Room Pokemon. Um, Talonflame can come in and use um, you know, Gigal Wing's ability to get a flying type move off mm -hmm. um, immediately, which can be good. Um, but, you know, outside of Trick Room is where he really, really shines. You know, the sticky web option makes everything quicker. Commodore can. Um, use a Clanger Soul Blaze to boost all its stats. Excadrill, Sand Rush. Um, Stoutland, also Sand Rush. Mm -hmm. uh, got, he's just got a lot of quick Pokemon. And I think it'll, be, it can be very, very dangerous. Very, um, what a fast Pokemon. A nice fast Pokemon can be very dangerous. Yeah, I agree. I also give him a 9. The only thing I don't agree with you with is uh, the, the Trick Room thing. He has uh, two Trick Room answers. Copagrigus and Jellicent can counter Trick Room. They both can get that off and stop any potential Trick Room shenanigans. So that that's a good option for him. And, um, I mean, even Stoutland could be a... If he can read it right and prep and see Trick Room coming, he can uh, get that uh, diner service or dinner service on Stoutland and have it with an ability of like i think uh what's it called what's his other ability it's got intimidate oh, scrappy scrappy. So scrappy yeah scrappy or intimidate and he can just go to town that way hmm. that's not that's not bad idea <clears throat> i still think nine. Oh yeah nine nine's for sure and uh, I'll let you go ahead and take away nines. with the wall breakers. Wall breaking is a nine. Um, the Pokemon that he has, extra drill. Uh, it, there's near on no need to set up. Extra drill will come out. You can press earthquake and things will go down. Um, aside from like levitate and flying type options, but even if he does have flying type options, even if, even if the opposition brings a flying type, you've got nine hours with Gilvanchula. Uh, to you know, really, really punish those flying types. Um, you know, Tyranitar 
after Dragon Dance, yes, would be would be a lot more formidable. Mm-hmm. Uh, com- but Kamala com- will, in and of itself, bust holes. Um, it it only, only gets more dangerous after playing a Soul Blaze. I've always had problems with um, Kamala. Um, I don't know what it is. I've just never never felt comfortable when a Kamala comes out into the field. <laughs> yeah. um, I know that one all too well. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a tough tough work to come up against, and you know, you, if you've got Tyranitar out first, and you've got webs up, and you've got uh, Sandforce Exudril with a choice scarf, man, a lot of stuff's going down. Like there's not a lot of Pokemon that wants to take a boosted Earthquake or a boosted Iron Head. Um, it's just not something that they that anyone really wants. So I think a nine is. Um, where where it's at yeah i'm gonna go with an eight uh the biggest threats i see are x and drill offensively and maybe nine tails but uh i don't know if uh matt's actually going to use nine tails in an offensive way <clears throat> obviously it does have uh it just hits hard naturally but those are the two biggest threats i see stoutland can be a problem for most teams but it still takes a little bit to chip away and again, Komo is so versatile and can play, be played so many ways, but it still needs to set up before it starts doing something. I think the only real issue that he's got is that um, maybe the Dynamax options. Mm-hmm. So I think the only real Dynamax option that he's got is probably Statland because of the Sand Rush. He probably, you know, nab off a uh, Max Knuckle, off a, off a Reversal or off a, you know, um, a Rock Smash or whatever, whatever fighting moves that Statland gets. So I think... Yeah. You know, a be- I think to be even more formidable, a better Dynamax option, like a, a good offensive Dynamax option, would just really set this team alight. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, lastly but not leastly, we go to a Team Synergy, and I'm gonna give this team a nine in that category. I do see a lot Same. of good synergy in this team. Um. I especially feel Komo'o is going to be pretty much the anchor to this team. I know he's running Sand and Excadrill and Stoutland are big names there. But Komo'o with the ability Overcoat, it's not going to get hit by Sand. It's not going to get hit by Hell. So whatever Matt decides to do, he can get up the Bell. He can get up the Sand and be set up with his other Pokemon. But if it comes down to it, Komo'o can come in at a weak point, take advantage, and set up the sweep from there. Yeah, no, I agree. Nine as well. Um, you know, Calvin Chula providing those web support, Bolt being able to Volt switch back out. Um, there's not a lot of other you know, pivoting options, but the team doesn't really need it so much as, like, you could, you could comfortably take a sack on a lot of these Pokemon and move into the next team member, which will then finish the job. Like, there's not real, like Sigilith gets, um, well, Sigilith gets the um, Magic Guard as well. It's like everything in the team can generally take the the Sand or Hail option. I think that, um, again, the only real issue I see with the team synergy is that I don't think Nine Tails necessarily um, adds a lot of value to an otherwise Sand team. Maybe, um, like Aura Veil is if he's fantastic, so I can see why he's got it. Um, so I'm not sure, that, but I'm also just not sure that maybe maybe bring in a, a slush rush user to keep people guessing, or maybe swapping out Nine Tails for Meowstic Nail um, to get the dual screen support. Um, I think, you know, I think there's a, I think he's got a good good team all around though. All right, so what we can say is the top four teams in order are CC, Joe. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. What'd you, uh, oh, of course, what, what of course, overall, Joe. What was your overall for Matt? Um, 41, so 82. Okay. I mean, 84, 82, 82. And that gives you right? 83. So that that changed the the, the the back end a little bit. So in order, we have CC at number one, Joe Zamora at number two, Matt 
at number three and Jaden at number four. So that's the Oof. top four. Who do y'all see in the playoffs in each division? Um, I think so. I've actually got this written down already. I think finalists, so I think the playoff, the people who make the playoffs are CC, um, Matt, Dusty, uh, Josh, Jeremy, and myself. And I, I've only included myself in this, not because I think I would actually make it. I actually looked at the opposition and I think, um, I actually think I'll come in third place, but I just think that I'm in a division where there's a lot of the teams that break, a lot of teams that break down the lower end. So I think I, sh- I should be able to comfortably get a- get across them. But I think I'll come in like third place. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of finalists, I think CC and Dusty will be the finalists. Without having CC taking the taking the crown. Yeah, I see uh, in y'all's division. I see you, Jaden, Morgan, and Josh making the playoff on that side. And then on the Galar side, uh, Cece, of course, is going to make the playoff. She She's an incredible battler. Um, I don't want to say myself because I don't have the confidence in the battle, the, the way I battle. Because, I mean, I, just the other day I had zero deferential in my win. So uh, I would have to go with maybe Haseen and Matt to make the playoff. So CC Haseen and Matt on the Galar side. Uh, I uh, I gotta say probably on the Kanto side, uh, Jaden. I think you're you're gonna be there. I think Dusty's gonna be there. Um, inevitably though, I think uh, the winner of the Kanto side is gonna be Steven. Uh, I think he's just got <laughs> the, the best team to to get to the top. Uh, calling it now. Um, <laughs> On the uh, Galar side, um, hot takes with Matt. <laughs> the best takes. Uh, I uh, I I oftentimes make it to the playoffs, and that's usually uh, where the buck stops for me. I, I get there just in time to beat Quack to it. Um, so I think I'll 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 get third, uh, make my way into the playoffs. Um, I I see Joe and CC. Uh, in, in the playoffs as well, though. I've, I've got Joe to just miss out. I think, um, as usual. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I just, I just know how you've been battling lately. I just think it's just a bit. Um, <laughs> I felt like I've been battling uh, a little bit better, but you know. <laughs> I just think, I just think you got so much competition on side on on that side of the um, draft, and I think, I think it's just done too much. There'll be too much competition for the top three spaces, so I just think you'll miss out, but only just. I really think uh, it'll depend on how my week one goes versus CC. That'll set the tone. Hmm. But all if right, you can guys. manage to jag, if you, if you manage to jag a win against CC, that they'll really set you up. Oh but yeah, it, it'll boost middle. my confidence like a motherfucker. But I'm already looking at her team with the double intimidates, and I'm just like, whoo. How am I going to do this? <laughs> mm. But all right, guys, that is the teams. That is the breakdown. And I will be posting a full thumbnail of first to last rankings. And we will see you guys after week one.